Yeah, we pray every day. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, that was weak. Praise the Lord, everybody. I said, praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Welcome to Zion Church in Jesus Christ. Amen. And I'm going to be leading prayer. And we're going to read the scripture right afterwards. If you are able to stand, rest upon your feet, please. And we're going to pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for another day that you have made. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Lord, for your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for what we learned about being holy in Bible uh, Sunday school this morning. Lord, as we head on into our service on today, uh, we ask you, Lord, to please come in and fill the house. Uh, Lord, we ask that you come in uh, and touch somebody. Uh, we ask that you touch somebody that needs to be healed uh, today. We are starting with our pastor, Lord. Uh, we ask that you touch his body. Uh, and heal him, Father, in Jesus' name. Uh, we pray for all others, Elder Shepherd and all the others that I might not have their names, uh, uh, that are sick this morning, uh, that you touch them uh, and heal their bodies, Lord, in Jesus' name. Uh, Lord, we pray for those that are here, uh, anyone that needs to be saved, uh, Lord, that you minister your word to them uh, and help them to change their mind uh, and come and get saved. Uh, we pray for the word, speaker of the hour, Lord, that you help the speaker and bring the word uh, that's going to touch the hearts uh, of those that are here this morning father all those that are on facebook bless them guide and direct them uh, and lord just have your way in our service on today in jesus name amen as you uh keep standing uh book is going to be uh reading is going to be from the book of proverbs this morning chapter number three and I'm going to read verses 5, 6, and 7. Proverbs chapter 3. And I'm going to read verses 5, 6, and 7. Uh, and I'm going to just read in your hearing. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct thy paths. Verse number 7. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Put your hands together. Amen. We come to magnify and lift up the name of Jesus. We come to glorify his name. Open up your mouth and give your God a praise. Come on, open up your mouth and give him all the glory. Come on, how has your God been to you? We're coming, entering to his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Hallelujah. And we come to just bless his holy name. With my hands lifted up. Oh, Lord. 
God of praise. Everyone that can stand, come on, stand to your feet. Put your hands together and give God a praise. I can't find nobody. I can't find nobody. I can't find nobody. I can't find nobody. Hey, nobody. Do you like Jesus? Hallelujah. Now with the music stop, do you still have a praise? Do you need a drum beat to praise him? No, do you need the organ to praise him? Come on, if you got a praise in your heart, a praise on your tongue, give him a praise right now without the music, without the guitars, without the drums, without the organ. Come on, just lift your voice and begin to praise him. Hallelujah. Come on and thank him. 
He woke you up this morning, started you on your way. That right there deserves a praise. All right, come on, musicians. Come on, musicians. Look like we still need some help. Hallelujah. But when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask for an advanced praise. I'm going to ask for an advanced praise. I want an advanced praise for our pastor walking back in these doors. Come on, give me an advanced praise. Let's praise God in advance. Don't wait till the battle is over, but come on and praise him right now. I know you're comfortable where you are, but come on, just begin to move in here. Come on, come on. Come on, get out to see. Get uncomfortable. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 An advanced praise. Come on, young people. Hallelujah. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Hallelujah. Esther, do me a favor. Praise back there with a pastor, first lady. Praise back there with first lady. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, Lord. Come on, y'all. Let's praise him. Don't, don't spectate, but participate. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Yeah. Watch out, mama. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Thank you. Church. One more time. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. To me, that's a war cry. We gonna step on the devil's head tonight. Come on, this morning. Pick him up and put him down. Yeah. Let the devil know what he's in for. Bless First Lady, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, have your way in this place. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more time. Oh. Come on, put your hands together and give him a praise. Come on, give him the fruit of your lips. It's easy to clap, but now give him the fruit of your lips. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah, we thank him. Hallelujah, and we praise him. Ah, Shababosia. Hallelujah. For his presence that is in this place. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. How excellent. O oh Lord, none like you, Lord, none like you, none like you, none like you. Bless the Lord, strengthen the first lady, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Is he excellent to you? Amen. Just one more time, give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. We feel your presence in this place, Lord. Hallelujah. We honor him this afternoon for who he is. He is the almighty God. There is none before him and there will be none after him. And he's worthy to be praised. We honor our pastor on this afternoon. If he's on with us, everybody just wave at him, wave at him. I believe he can see us. Amen. Yes, sir. Let him see everybody waving at him. Wave at him. Hallelujah. We miss you, Pastor. We're praying for you, sir. In the matchless name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Just sit there when you think about the excellency of our God. Boy, that name is excellent. The name of Jesus. 
is excellent. No other name given among men whereby we must be saved. Hallelujah. We thank God for the for his presence. We thank him for the atmosphere that has been set. For now it is time for the word of God. The Bible says man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. How many are ready for a move of God? Let me look this way. How many are ready for a move of God? You are not here by accident. God ordained you to be here. And he ordained this, this vessel that he's going to use to be here for such a time as this. And I'm going to ask everyone to rise for you to your feet. This vessel that God is going to use today is not a stranger to Zion Church in Jesus Christ. She is welcomed here. She is loved here. And we're going to let God have his way. Amen. I present to some and introduce to others evangelist Cheryl Harrison. Can we greet her with a hearty amen? Please be seated. Can we give God a hand praise on this morning? Now you can stand up. Everybody, let's stand up and give God a hand praise. Come on. He is worthy of all the praise that we can give him. Come on. Let's give God a praise. My God today. Let's give God. Let's give God. Come on. Let's give God a praise. For if it had not a been. For if it had not have been, for if it had not have been, y'all don't want to say that, for if it had not have been, for the Lord on my side, I said if it had not have been, If it had not have been for the Lord on my side, I wouldn't be standing here today. I wouldn't be walking today. Oh, God, help me on the day. I said, if it had not have been, can you think about what God brought you over? What God brought you to? What could have been? What should have been? What would have been? But God said no. If it had not have been. Oh God, I need you in here today. For the Lord on my side, Elder Shot. I wouldn't be standing here today. Oh God, I thank you. I thank you. I give you five reasons why you ought to praise him. He woke you up this morning. Reason number two, he woke you up this morning. Reason number three, he woke you up this morning. Reason number four, he woke you up this morning. Reason number five, he woke you up this morning. He woke you up, you was breathing. He woke you up, you was walking. He woke you up, you was talking. He woke you up, you was running. He woke you up, you got dressed. He woke you up, you brushed your teeth. He woke you up, you come to heaven. If it had not a bed, God help me. For the Lord. Oh, God, help me right now. I gave you five reasons why you ought to praise him if some of you still didn't move. 
Some of y'all still didn't move. But I see somebody waving their hands over here. Because she glad God woke her up this morning. God kept her mind. You ought to give God a praise for keeping your mind. Oh, y'all don't want to say nothing. You ought to give God a praise for keeping your mind. Do you know it's a blessing to have your mind? You ought to praise it for keeping your mind. Not just keeping it, but keeping it in the right mind. Y'all don't want to praise him. You ought to give him a right mind praise. God. I want the devil to know he kept my mind. 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 And not only did he keep it, he kept the state on Jesus. He kept his state on Jesus. He kept his state on Jesus. Without the music. Come on, preach the tambourine. Praise him without the music. Praise him without the music. I say, give him a keep in your mind, praise. Everybody in here, God have kept our mind. He have kept our mind. And not that he just keep it, he kept it stayed on Jesus. God kept it stayed on him. And you ought to praise God for keeping your mind. Let's go, musician. Come on, get down and keep your mind praying. Oh, somebody needs to run. Somebody needs to run. Somebody needs to run. Because you can't, can't, can't your mind. He didn't have to keep it. 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 my mind. If you knew how many people have lost their mind, if you knew how many people were walking down the street talking to themselves because they have lost their mind, you wouldn't be sitting here looking like Alice in Wonderland. You'd be getting up and you would praise God that he kept your mind stayed on Jesus. Oh God, I thank you. Amen. Can, let's, let's just give God a hand clap right quick. God is good. He's worthy to be praised. And we love the Lord on this morning. And we give our praise and honor to God. And we thank God for the angel of his house, Pastor Deary. May God bless you. Praying for you. Running that devil right out of there. 
running that devil right out of there. Oh, y'all done seen that. I said, running the devil right out of there. You cannot have him. You cannot have him. I'm busting the devil up. I came the day to bust the devil up. To tear the devil up. I'm busting the devil up. I came to bust up the devil. Bust up the witch. Bust up the warlock. Y'all didn't hear me. I said, bust up the witch. Bust up the warlock. I came to war today. I came to war today. I came to war today. I come to bust the devil up. Cause I'm sick of the devil. I'm sick of what he trying to try. God have done by trying to do to the men and women of God. To our precious, precious sister Deary. You be encouraged. Cause I promise you, I'm fighting the devil with you. I'm fighting the devil with you. Y'all gotta know how to do warfare. You have to know how to push your sleeves up and tell the devil enough is enough. Get on up out of here. Get your nasty self up out of here. Get your filthy demons up out of here. Get on up out of this house. Y'all scared? Are you scared to do warfare? You got to learn how to bust the devil up. And you bust him up in the spirit by prayer. This ain't no time to be being passive and sitting down and, and taking blows from the devil. You better push up your spiritual sleeves, put on your boxing glove, step in the ring, and say, bring it on, devil. Bring it on, devil. If it's a fight you want, it's a fight you gon' get. Bring it on, devil, because I'm not scared. Too many weak saints. Too many wimping saints. You can't be no wimp over here. You can't be no wimp over here. And I'm being nice while I'm saying what I'm saying. You can't be no wimp, weak saint over here. We dealing with a real devil. Real demons. And he don't have no horn and no tail. Some of them sitting right in God's house. Yeah, I'm coming for you. They sitting right in God's house. Doing they witchery and they sorcery and they who do right in God's house. Have a seat. Have a seat. So we praise God today for being in God's house. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. To the pulling down of stronghold. And we got some strongholds that need to be snatched down. There's some strongholds, y'all hear me? We got to pull these strongholds down. We got to pull these strongholds down. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Lay aside every weight and the sin that do so what easily besets you. And then he said, do what? Run. We got a lot of strongholds, a lot of weights in God's house that need to be pulled out. Snatch them down. We can't be pity and patting with the devil, y'all. Y'all hear me? Am I out here by myself? You can't be pity and patting with the devil. Not in this time. Not in this hour. There's too much going on. The devil is doing too much. We're saying sitting by, just letting him do it. I refuse to let the devil. I said, you ain't walking up in my house. Well, y'all don't want to say nothing. I said, you're not walking up in my house taking nobody out my house. Y'all just missed what I just said. I said, you're not walking up in my house. Y'all just missed what I said. Taking nobody out of my house. That God told me that I said, I shall not live and I shall not die, but I will declare the works of the Lord. You ain't taking nobody out of my house. You got to put your boxing gloves on. I got on two big red boxing gloves. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I'll be Sugar Leonard, Cassius Clay, all of them like the one, all at the same time. You not coming up in my house. Y'all laughing, but I'm dealing with a real devil and some real demons, and they're not going to stop fighting, and we can't stop fighting. Have a seat. 
Have a seat. You have to open up your eyes, your spiritual eyes, and ask God to let you see what's in the house. Shouting and dancing and not seeing, mother, what's in the house. Everybody coming to God's house, not coming for Jesus. Uh -huh, Y'all don't want to say that. Everybody not coming to God's house for the Lord. You have to open up your eyes and see what's coming into God's house. So we just praise God. Let's give God a hand praise right quick. I just thought I had to address the devil. I just had to address the devil. Because I want to tell the devil to know, you done mess with the wrong one. You didn't mess with the wrong one. Uh huh. You didn't mess with the wrong one. And you ought to tell the devil, you didn't mess with the wrong pastor now. Well, y'all just missed it. You didn't mess with the wrong pastor now. See, some of y'all still ain't moved. You didn't mess with the wrong pastor now. You didn't mess with the wrong, the wrong, the wrong, the wrong pastor. You didn't mess with the wrong pastor. See, that's how y'all need to come in here. Oh, I hear you, Lord. That's how you need to walk in here. When you walk in the door, you ought to tell the devil, you didn't mess with the wrong pastor now. Uh-uh. Not gonna have it. Not gonna happen. Not up in here. You didn't mess with the wrong pastor now. This man that prayed for me. This man that fasted for me. This man that gave me food. This man that helped pay my bill. This man that labored for me. You didn't mess with the wrong pastor now. See, somebody should have ran on that one. Because I just told y'all something. And it just went over y'all head. When I said that, all oh, y'all should have jumped up. And y'all should have been clapping your hands. She caught it. You should have been stepping on them demons. You should have been praising God. Because today we're going to shift this whole atmosphere. And we're going to run these demons and run these devils right out of here. No spirit of death coming up in here. We're going to cast the spirit of death out of here. We're going to cast the spirit of death out of here. Y'all better hear and look what the devil trying to do. I see what the devil trying to do. But the spirit of death, he's alive. Cast him out. Cast him out. Cast him out. Tell him he can't stay in here. He can't come up in here. He not welcome. Tamarind. 
bust the eardrum of the devil. Bust the demons up. That's why right, beat it. Drive the devil on up out of here. That's why, right, mother, beat that tamarind. Beat that tamarind. That's why right, in that corner. That's why, right, that's how you do it. With your praise. With your praise. With your praise. My message today was, your deliverance is in your praise. Your deliverance is in your praise. Your deliverance is in your praise. You got to open your mouth. You got to use your mouth. Your deliverance is in your mouth. You got to open up your mouth against the devil. We don't have time to be playing with him. We don't have time to be playing with him. I don't have time to be playing with the devil. Have a seat. We're going to get there right quick. And we're going to run. And we're going to stomp. And we're going to clap. And we're going to shabak. And we're going to praise. And we're going to run the devil right up out of Zion. Did y'all hear what I just said? I said, we're going to run the devil, brother, right out of Zion. Because the devil want to come up in here and sit up in here. God let me know that and pray. He want to sit up in here. But not today, devil. Not you. Not, not on my watch, you won't. Not today, you won't. Because I'm finna drive you crazy today. You got to know how to drive the devil crazy. Instead of letting him drive you crazy. Instead of you being cuckoo for cocoa puff crazy. You better drive the devil crazy. Did you hear what I say? When your feet hit the floor. Say I'm up today devil. I'm woke today devil. And I come to drive you crazy. You need to live so close to God that when God wake you up, the devil got to say, God, I hate you woke her up this morning. Oh, see, y'all laughing, but I'm very serious. I have sold my life out to God that I want to live so close to God, uh, Elder, I almost called you pastor, Elder, that the devil have to say, why don't you wake Cheryl up this morning? Y'all don't hear what I just said. I want to live so consecrated to God, Sister Deary, that the demons in hell got to say, God, why don't you wake Cheryl up this morning? And we don't want to live that close to God. I hear you, God. We don't want to live a consecrated life. I hear you, God. But if you're going to drive these demons out that's raising up today, you better have a consecrated life. Consecration. Sanctification. is what the devil respect. Do you know he don't even respect you speaking in tongues? Can I help us? He don't respect you speaking in tongues. He don't even respect when you run all the time. He ain't thinking about your long dress to your ankles. What he don't like is your consecration to God. I'm going to help the church today. He don't like your sanctification. He don't like your prayer life. And he don't like when you praise God. Consecrate us, God. We need to be consecrated. We spend more time on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and all these things. And it's slowly luring you from your consecration with the Lord. And that's why you don't have no power with God. That's why demons can come up in here and be comfortable. There's no way that you can live a consecrated life and come to church and the devil walk up in here and be comfortable. No way. There's no way the devil could be wreaking havoc 
in your house and be comfortable. When you live in a consecrated life, demons tremble. Oh, I'm going to say that again. I got some help. Huh? Let me find where my help is. I got my help right here in this corner. I got my help right here. I got my help. I need somebody praying for me. Pray for me, sis. Demons tremble when you live consecrated. Do you think I walked in here and thought everybody wanted me to come in here? The devil is a lie. I know the devil don't want me. I know that. But I'm here now. Consecration. Dedication. Is what God is calling for. Out of the church today. Not just Zion. But to whoever may be watching. I'm talking to you too. I'm talking to you too who don't want to pray. You who don't want to fast. You don't want to consecrate. You who don't want to sleep on the floor with Jesus. You better have a consecrated life. Your tongues mean nothing to the devil. Jesus, Paul I know. Jesus I know. But who are you? You can pretend this life. You can pretend this life. If you want, I'm staying with the Holy Ghost. You can pretend this walk if you want to. But demons know when you got God. The devil know when you got God, man of God. The demons in hell know when you got God. You got to have a consecrated life. Get off all this stuff. The devil is tricking the saints of God. And God dealt with me in prayer. I said, Lord, like I always do, why am I been asked to come back to Zion? And not so much why. But the leader asked me to come. It's different when the leader asks you to come. So I know why I'm here. To bust the devil right on up out of here. I'm your help today. I'm your help today. I'm your help, sister dearie. To drive the devil right on up out of here. Because the devil ain't going to take her mind. The devil ain't going to take your mind, sister dearie. The devil not going to cry you crazy behind all of this madness that the devil is trying to do. I came to help you out today. Because you only got a little help in here, you know that, right? I'm going to bust that devil up. Huh? You only got a little help in here. But there's some help up here. Because one can chase a thousand. Ha! Two put ten thousand of life. Uh-huh. You got some help in here. Your praise team is your help. Your praise team is your help. That's why y'all got to sing under the power of God. You got to sing under the anointing of God. You can't let flesh sing because there is power when you sing. Your deliverance is in your praise. Let's talk about David right quick. Let's talk about David. We know about David, right? We all know about David. We talk about David and his adultery. Because we love to talk about people's sin. And we love to talk about people's mess. But let's talk about David the worshiper. I love David the worshiper. Because in spite of David's sin, and in spite of his mess, David knew how to get in touch with God. See, you got to know how to get in touch with God. In spite of your sins, and in spite of your shortcomings, there is a thing called worship. There is a thing called praise. Because God already knew you was going to do it before you do it. He said, but oh, he don't despise a broken and a contrite heart. God said, if you humble yourself, God said, I'll still bless you. Let's talk about David. God said that David, I got my, I got my help right there and right here. God said, David was a man after his own heart. We all know about David. Hated by his brothers. But one thing I say, I don't care how folks hate you, they can't take that anointing off your life. 
I don't care how they lie on you. They can't take that knowing off your life. I don't care how they try to sabotage you, just said. They can't take that knowing off your life. I don't care how they try to plot and scheme. They can't take that knowing off your life. Let's talk about David. The Bible said that God handpicked and chose David in the midst of his brothers. But he was hated by his brothers. Which tell me that everybody around you is not for you. Y'all ain't gonna sit on me today. I'm getting it up. Everybody around you not for you, sis. Some people love to see you going through your trials and tests. Some people love to see you going through what you're going through, Sister Terry. But I came to help you bust the devil up. The Bible says that David was loved by God. Not that he was perfect. Mm -mm. Not that he was flawless. But he was loved by God. Because he knew how to invite the presence of God in. He knew how to get God's attention. And God sent me here today to tell somebody he waiting on you to get his attention. Oh, y'all still didn't move. God said he waiting on you to get his attention. You say you waiting on God. God said, no, he waiting on you. He waiting on you to push that play back. He waiting on you to turn that TV off. He waiting on you to get off Facebook. He waiting on you to get off Instagram. He waiting on you to turn off Twitter. God said he waiting on you to get his attention. David, he knew how to get God's attention. The Bible said, well, why he out there in the field? He was having a love affair with God. He knew how to have intimacy with God, mother. He knew how to talk to God. And because he knew how to talk to God, when David called on God, God was right there. See, you can't call on God and expect God to answer if you haven't been spending no time with him. You got to spend time with God in order for God to answer. When you call on him, you got to be to spend time with God. He called on God. God came to see about it. He said, I slew the lion because I called on God. I slew the bear because I called on God. And this uncircumcised Philistine Goliath, I'm going to chop his head off because I called on God. See, you can't cut the devil down unless you have a relationship with God. You can't defeat your enemy unless you have a relationship with God. Y'all better get off me. You can't get to victory unless you have a relationship with God. God say he waiting on you to get his attention. David knew how to get God's attention. And there's two things. Have a seat. You praying for me. I can feel you. I feel your prayers. It's two things that the devil fight the saints of God with every time you come to the house of God. And that is prayer and praise. Prayer, like my daughter say, that's my lifeline. I don't know what your lifeline is, but prayer is my lifeline. I can't breathe without it. I can't sleep without it. I can't live without it. I can't eat without it. I can't walk without it. I can't drive my car without it. I can't pay my bills without it. I can't keep my body healed without it. Prayer. He fight the saints from having a prayer life. And then he fights you with your praise. And the reason why he fights us, mother, is because prayer and praise is two of the most powerful weapons to use against the enemy. If you want your stronghold to come down, you better have a prayer life. Oh, yes. If you want to get delivered, you better have a prayer life. If you want to see the devil get off your kids, you better have a prayer life. He fight us. In the area of prayer, he fight us. In the area of praise, he don't want us to pray. Because when you begin to pray and praise God in his house, it shifts the whole atmosphere. It invokes the very divine presence of God to step in. And we need God to step in Zion and get off our pastor. We need God to come in here and tell the devil to loose his hold on to his body. We need God to come in here and fight for Pastor Derek. Prayer. Praise. 
He fights it. God showed me that he wanted to shift the atmosphere. He said, they got to pray more. And you got to praise more. The devil don't like when you praise. We are serving the almighty God. Think about who you're serving. Think about who you're serving. He's a holy God. Can I throw that in there? He's a holy God. And he told us to be ye holy. For he is holy. And he said, come out from among them. Oh, God, I hear you. Come out from among them. Come out from among them. And be ye separate. You can't get your prayers answered if you're not living right. You can't get your prayers answered if you're not living holy. You can't get your prayers answered one foot in the world and one foot in the church. The devil is a liar. You either going to have both foot in or both foot out. He said he'd rather you're hot or cold. But if you're lukewarm, he said you're detestable to him. David was a man God said after his own heart because he knew how to get in touch with God. He had intimacy with God. See, David had a love affair with God. My question to you today, what is your love affair like? What is your love affair like? Is it part-time love? Don't no woman want a part-time lover. Oh, yeah, I'm going there today. Don't no man want a part-time lover. Either you're going to love me all the way or you're not going to love me at all. Oh, see, y'all got y'all tighten up right there. Either you're gonna love God all the way or you're not gonna love God at all. God don't want no part-time lover out of you. God don't want no half-hearted prayer. God don't want no half-hearted praise. Either you're gonna be in there with God all the way or you not. David had intimacy with God. He loved God. He loved God more than his food. He loved God. Yes, we know he sinned. Yes, we know he messed up. But David know how to get it right. Some of us mess up and we won't go get it right. Some of us do stuff and we won't repent and get it right. And that's why you got to pray and praise. So God can pull all these strongholds. There's strongholds, strongholds. The saints got strongholds. Saints cannot be demon possessed. But you can be demon oppressed. And a lot of these strongholds are being demonically oppressed. Strongholds of envy. Strongholds of jealousy. Strongholds of malice. Strongholds of bitterness. All these weights that God said you got to lay them aside. You come in God's house, we act like we don't have nothing. Oh, I'm good. I'm all right. I got a job. My bills is paid. I'm good. Are you? Are you really good? Are you really good? You know how I know you're good? When you can look the devil right in his face and tell him where to go when he leaves. That's when I know you're good. When you can rebuke the devil and tell the devil, shut up, devil, get out of here, and he leave. That's when I know you're good. David knew how to get in touch with God because he knew how to praise God. He spent time with God. We spend more time doing everything else that we do with God. And David knew how to get in touch with God. And I'm so glad, Elder, I know how to get in touch with God. I'm so glad I know that when I call on him, he gonna answer me. Oh, y'all don't want to say nothing. I'm so glad I know uh, that when I call him up, uh, he will answer me. I'm so glad I know uh, that many are the afflictions uh, of the righteous, uh, but God, uh, he will deliver me out of them all. Uh, I can say, uh, like David, uh, it was good for me uh, that I've been afflicted because I've got to know God in a way uh, that I didn't know him before. You got to know him. You got to know him. Paul said, oh, that I may know him. Serving him and knowing him is two different things. 
Can I help the church? Serving God and knowing God is two different things. A lot of people in God's house don't know him. You don't know him. So that's why his spirit hover and he start moving. You sit. If you really knew him. And when he start moving, you start moving. When he show up, you start moving. The praise team should not have to pump and prime and beg you to get up if you know God. You would be running to his house. I'm going to meet God. See, we don't have that urgency for God like it used to be since when I was saved. We used to be running to get to the house of God. We used to be running to get to Sunday school. We used to be running to get the Bible study. The urgency to be in the presence ha, of God is not there no more. God said, I want my children to hunger after me. I want them to thirst after me. I want them to be a God chaser and not a man chaser. I want them to be a God pleaser and not a man pleaser. So many of you are so busy trying to please men that you're not pleasing God. David knew how to get in touch with God because he had a relationship. I hear you, God. He had a relationship that with God that was like no other. And I'm asking God in this year, God, help the saints. Help us to have a relationship with you, God. Help us, God, to have a relationship with you like you want us to have. Because when you have a relationship, God will heal you when you have a relationship. God will deliver you when you have a relationship. God will bless you when you have a relationship. I'm so glad that I got a relationship because of my relationship God has healed me because of my relationship God has delivered me because of my relationship God has strengthened me because of my relationship God has kept my mind because of my relationship God has had mercy because of my relationship God has forgiven me because of my relationship God gonna save my son because of my relationship God gonna get the glory because he told me in his word. He said in everything that I have breath, praise ye the Lord. If you praise him, he'll heal your body. If you praise him, he'll save your son. If you praise him, he'll save your daughter. If you praise him, he'll take care of you. If you praise him, he'll pay your bills. If you praise him, he'll deliver past the bill. If you praise him, he'll cast the devil out. Come on, brother. If you praise him, he'll supply your needs. Open doors. If you praise him, he'll make ways. If you praise him, he'll cast the devil out. Oh, that men will praise the Lord. Oh, that men will praise the Lord. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him for his excellent grace. Praise him for the dog trap. Praise him on the salt. Let everything. Let everything. Let everything. Let everything. Praise the Lord. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. When you get tired, praise him. When you get weak, praise him. When you don't feel like it, praise him. When they're acting up, praise him. When they lying on you, praise him. Let everything. Let everything. Let everything. Let everything. Let everything. In the midnight hour, praise him in the morning, praise him in the noonday, praise him when your body hurts, praise him when your body don't feel good, praise him when you don't feel like it, praise him when that husband acting up, praise him when the wife acting up, praise him when the boss acting up, praise him when your enemies fight, praise him. Drive the devil out your house. 
with your praise. Drive the devil off your job with your praise. Drive the devil out your kids with your praise. Drive the devil out your home with your praise. Tell the devil he's a liar. Tell the devil he's a liar. Tell the devil he's a liar. The devil is a liar, Pastor Gary. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. I'm a hip driver now. I'm a hip driver now. Driving out. Driving out. Driving out. Driving out. Driving out. Driving out. With your praise, he inhabits the praises of his people. God inhabits the praises of his people. He dwells where praises are. He lives where praises are. He come down where praises are. He show up where praises are. He change the atmosphere where praises are. He'll drive out demons. He'll drive out devils. He'll lose the battle if you pray. Come on and pray. Come on and pray. Come on and pray. Let everything. Let everything. Let everything. Let everything. Let everything. When they don't like your praise, when they talk about your praise, when they lie on your praise, when they sabotage praise, when they try to fix you up praise, when they try to undermine your praise, let everything, let everything, let everything, 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 let everything, let everything, let everything, praise. Praise, 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 praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Go to your house and praise. Go on your job and praise. Go on your kids and praise. Praise. God wants you to praise him. Your deliverance is in your praise. Your deliverance is in your prayer life. Your deliverance is in your consecration. Consecrate me, O oh God, for thy service. Consecrate me, O oh God, to be used by you. God is calling for consecration. He's calling. For praise out of us. He's calling for us to spend some time with him. We want everybody else to pray for us. And we want to sleep in the bed. The devil is a bold-faced liar. You got to get on that flow. You got to get on that flow. You have to get on that flow. And spend time with the Lord. Because nobody know your trouble better than you. Well, y'all don't want to say nothing. You got to spend time with God. David spent time with God. And when you study about David, God gave him the victory. In every situation David found himself in. When he was in the cave, hiding from Saul, fleeing from Absalom. It's bad when your own children turn against you. Oh, y'all don't want to say nothing. His own son, Absalom, Rose up against him. It's bad when the ones you help turn against you. Oh, y'all don't want to say nothing. It's bad when the ones you pray for day and night, miss meal, shut in, letting the air beat you up, turn against you. That's a bad thing. But in spite of all of it, brother, when David called on God, He always answered. He always showed up. He had some pain. We're going to have pain in this life. It's called the process of pain. But I call it the process before promotion. God, I hear you. That's a word for somebody over here. Oh, I call it the process. God said, sure, don't look at the pain. I'm processing you for promotion. I 
I'm standing up here right now for promotion. Process for promotion. So don't get upset when they lie on you. Praise God. They just praising you until another platform. I just prophesied to you. Don't get upset when they talk about you. Praise him. Because God just creating another platform. Because I want the devil to know everything you tried, it didn't work. Everything the devil tried, it didn't work. Because I'm still here. And I'm still standing. And I'm still praising. And I'm still preaching. And I'm still prophesying. And I'm still laying hands. And I'm still casting the devil out. Everything. I said everything. If y'all only knew the things that the devil tried to do to me, they know. But they are witness that everything. The devil tried. It didn't work. I should be crazy by now. But since everything the devil tried against us, it still ain't worked, huh? Hey, because we're still praising. And we're still worshiping. And God's still keeping us looking good. Oh, yeah, it didn't work, mother. They thought we'd be crazy by now. But God just making us look younger. He making us look better. He making us look good for him. He setting us up for promotion. And everything that the devil thought he was going to take from you, God said, it's all right. He just setting you up for promotion. Now, that was their word. But if you know God doing that for you, you ought to praise him too. You ought to praise him too. Yeah. Yes, God. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Come on, praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Come on, shift the atmosphere. We need it to go to Pastor Gary. Come on, we need the anointing to go to him. Come on, come on. Come on, praise him. We need the anointing to touch Pastor Gary. We need the power to go to him. God touch him. God heal. God deliver. God set free. Cast that devil out. I cast you out, devil. I cast you out in the name of Jesus. Come on, say Come on. Come on. Come on. Hey. Draw the devil out of it. Draw the devil. Come on. Praise. Praise. Mr. Mitchell. Whoa! 